At the moment, we are diagnosing respiratory conditions far too late. We're not empowering people to look after themselves and engage in the behaviours that will keep them well. And we're waiting until people hit crisis and get really sick before we intervene. And then it becomes a very costly intervention because they're in hospital. And so the work that we're trying to do is about shifting specialism upstream breaking down that barrier between primary and secondary care and trying out innovative ways of working uh, to try and address some of those issues. So one of the things we're rolling out across uh, Manchester at the moment are virtual clinics. So these are based on a model that was uh, founded in London actually and has been very successful down there. It's secondary care clinicians going into primary care and having face-to-face -face discussions through virtual patient records. Uh, but with a focus on encouraging the right behaviours, referral to pulmonary rehab, tobacco addiction, flu vaccination, as well as optimising medications and making sure people are on, on the right um, medicines. Uh, and the feedback from those virtual clinics has been fantastic. You know, primary care really welcomed the support and uh, mentorship, if you like, in looking after the vast majority of respiratory patients who are under their care. Anecdotally, we've had reports from some of the practices that just the simple changing of an inhaler has really turned their lives around. Uh, so they may have been stuck on the same old devices for years and years and they've been given a new lease of life or they've engaged in pulmonary rehab and that's really been very beneficial for them. We're not doing very well at collecting the, the patient feedback formally and that's something we are working on and it's obviously such an important aspect of what we're doing. Um, but we're looking at innovative ways of doing that as well. Well, our ambition is to scale these up across Greater Manchester, uh, across all 500 practices if we can. Uh, however, there are very clear barriers in the system to us achieving that. There's perverse payment incentives at the moment, there's workforce issues. Hospitals haven't got a lot of specialists to spare to go out and do this kind of work. Um, but I think collectively, if the system drives it, those barriers can be overcome. One of the things I haven't mentioned today is a programme called the Cure Programme, which is being um, led by one of my colleagues, Matt Everson, in Greater Manchester. It is a complete transformation of how we look at tobacco addiction. So we're moving away of, from this being a lifestyle choice to it being seen as a relapsing, remitting disease that will kill you eventually. And it's got very, very good treatments that are available but are underutilised. So every patient who comes into our hospital now who smokes will get targeted interventions around smoking cessation and the results from that have been absolutely fantastic with something like a 60% quit rate at six weeks. I think these sorts of large programmes, clinically led, are going to be key to turning around some of our outcomes. I mean, treating tobacco addiction is probably the most cost-effective thing that we can do as a respiratory group.